Do you notice that they have the same amount of ink on them? Do you notice that they're made out of the same virtually worthless stuff? It's paper. Did you get it? It's paper. When we create money, we have created an instrument of value that has no value of its own. And it's just as expensive or inexpensive to print the 20 as it is to print the 1. I'm here to prove to you that bankers, especially in the Federal Reserve System, make multiplied trillions of dollars and never create one thing of value. Are you with me? You want to learn this or not? Are you sure? An automaker might make 1% or 2% profit. A builder might make 10% profit. But the printers of money have no limit to the, ab ab to the amount of money they can create and the wealth that they can create for themselves. Money is the bloodline of a civilized society. It's the instrument by which a product is sold or bought. Reduce the supply of money below the necessary levels to sustain trade. Reduce the amount of this in the system below the levels necessary to sustain the current trade and you create a depression. In 1930, let me ask you a question. Did we not have farms? In 1930, did we not have factories? Did we have the greatest roadway system in the world at that time? Yes. Did we have the greatest communication system in the world at that time? Yes. Did we, did we have the greatest uh, uh, opportunity of trade with oceans on both sides and water systems like the Mississippi River running through the width and breadth of this nation? Did we have ability to move our goods and services? Yes. Did we have transportation and roadways? Yes. What did we not? Did we lack workers? Then what happened? I'll tell you what happened. The bankers decided no more money for you. They got out of the stock market. I can give you the family names. They got out of the stock market the year before. Do you know all the money that was lost in the stock market as people began to sell their stocks one after the other after the other after the other and stocks that were valued at $10,000 were selling for 15 cents? And then they had to make a run on the bank because the, the banks, the stock market had said, oh, I'll tell you what you can do. You can borrow on margin. In other words, you can buy, the economy's really good here in the late 20s. Here's what you can do. You can borrow on margin for stocks. You can buy a stock at $100 worth of stock, you can buy it for $10 and we'll lend you the other money to buy the stock and the stock is skyrocketing so you stand to make a great profit. What they didn't tell the American people and what you still don't know today is that when they did that, they also put into that legislation that they would have a 24-hour recall. In other words, however much stock you bought, it would make a lot of money, but they could call that stock in and you would be required not only to pay for the stock but to pay for what you borrowed at interest from them. In other words, now you've got to pay the $100 that they loaned you, but they're the ones that are calling it in. So when they called it in, you didn't have the money to pay for it, so you ran to the bank. But the bank only keeps 20% money on, on, on hand. They loan the rest of it out. So only 20% of the people could get any of their money out of the bank. So the banks collapsed. The stock market collapsed. All at the whim of the bankers who decided they wanted to make the money. Watch me. Watch me. All that stuff was being sold. $100,000 farms were selling for $3,000. Who do you think bought them?
Why are you looking at me funny? You know what you're looking at? You're looking like sheep that have been led to the slaughter and didn't know it. I'm going to continue. Can I continue? We didn't lack industrial capability. If you don't believe me, I just told you what started the Great Depression. Let me tell you what ended it. World War II. And all of a sudden, the same banks that said no money for farms, no money for food, put people in soup lines, no money for commerce, no money for railroads, no money for roads, no money, no money, all of a sudden said war. And all of a sudden factories that were closed down began to work three shifts. Where'd the money come from? The same pockets that refused to give it before. Because they decide when it will be printed, how much will be printed, and how much usury or interest will be paid. Not the federal government. The federal government has no say in it, as I will prove to you. Say, debt, debt. is a devil. By the simple manipulation of a few wealthy bankers, World War II ended the Great Depression. After successive failures to convince the public of the need of a central bank by wars, these same European bankers financed both sides of the Civil War in this country. You don't even know that. Same bankers, same families, financed both sides of the Civil War. Why? They make the money. After they couldn't get the American people to swallow the lie of a central bank by creating war, they decided they would artificially create, listen to me, recessions, depressions, inflations, and panics. Since only a small amount of deposits are stored at the bank, about 20%, the other 80% is out on loan with security of property and your promise to pay it back. A simple rumor of a bank's insolvency would make a run on that bank. Everybody would get nervous, go pull their money out of the bank, and that bank would collapse. And then the international bankers who started the rumor in the first place would look like prophets. P-R-O-P-H-E-T-S, prophets. Are you hearing something you've never known? Wave your hand. If you think America ought to know, wave your other hand. All right, then don't quit on me. One of the key movers and shakers of this, uh, let's get a central bank by making the people afraid by causing their banks to collapse. One of the key movers and shakers was a man by the name of, you might recognize it, J.P. Morgan. His father was an agent for the wealthy, you might know this name, Rothschild family. Here's a quote. The Federal Reserve. In 1869, J.P. Morgan went to London and reached an agreement for a company known as the Southern Northern Securities that was intended to act as the international bank, as, as the agent for the Rothschild Company in the United States. The first major panic created by the international bankers occurred in 1893 when local bankers from around the nation were told to call in all their loans. Told by who? By these wealthy bankers. Senator Robert Owen testified before a congressional committee that the call on the banks, watch, testified before a congressional committee that the bank he owned, this was a senator, received from the National Bankers Association what came to be known as the Panic Circular of 1893. It stated, you will at once retire one-third of your circulation and call in one-half of all your loans. Why? Because that makes the bank collapse. 